Fog seems to be something that we see in all kinds of places, uh, in all kinds of shapes, doing all sorts of things. And one of our subscribers asked, how do you paint fog? Uh, let's take a look at that. Well, as you know, when someone asks me how to paint something, I always resist saying, giving you a formula for that, because painting by formula is so restricting. It may, feel you, may make you feel good as far as your ego goes, but it doesn't really interpret what you're looking at. I would rather go, uh, go with you to a place where you look at what it's doing, not what it is. So, as I said, there are many, many kinds of fog. Fog does, does all sorts of things. And, and, and so I just went on to pixbay.com and typed in fog and found this scene. So decided we'll go this way because if you learn how to ask the right questions and look for the right thing, you can paint any kind of fog in any kind of shape or situation. So what's the first question? The first question is, what do you actually see going on in terms of value and edges? Those are the two things you look for. And what I mean by edges? Well, I mean by edges, uh, the, the divisions of shape. When you can see a shape clearly, if you give it a really clear, crisp edge, that's called hard edge, also called a sharp edge. But you're not going to see that in fog. In fog, look carefully. Just look carefully with me here and look at those edges. You see how soft those edges are? Look carefully with me at something else, value. Let's start in the sky. You see here, we don't. the sky is, is just gone. It's, it's just white, kind of a grayish white. Well, look what's happening. Now watch carefully. The sky right in here has totally taken away, or the fog has to almost totally taken away the image. You can see a bare impression of image. There's about a half value difference between the image here and here. You don't see any color. You don't see green. The fog subtracts the color out. The denser the fog, the less color you're going to see. You can always count on that. So as you look at look at the fog as it comes as it comes down closer to the surface, there's less fog in this photo. That might not always be true. As it comes down, you begin to see a little bit more of the image. Just look at this image right here. As you come down, you see just a little bit more of the image. You're not still, still not seeing color, not the real color of the image. You might feel some sense of color. If you think you see color, it's probably because you know that trees are green. Well, you don't paint what you know, you paint what you see. So, that is if you're doing realistic painting. So, bring your eyes on down, on down, on down, and you see as you get closer to the ground, only at the very bottom here do you begin to see color and value, uh, value differences, but still you don't see edges really clearly because the fog is still affecting the edges. Uh, if you let your eye move over to the side here, this tree where you're closer to it and there's hardly any fog there, you can see the sharper edge. So how would we do that? Now I'm going to give you just a very, very brief uh, little demonstration just a little bit, just enough to show you how to think, how to see it, how to think, how to make decisions. So to start with, to start with, um, I will just do just a little bit of placement here, where we would uh, simply place where things are going to be. So let's say, um, and right over here, just a little bit. Said this. Let's say this is the top of the road right here. Okay. If that's the top of the road, and then this would be the other side of the road, and then as you moved up. These are the, the these are the trees. This would represent the edges of the trees that we see on that side of the road. As we move across the road over here, so the road comes on over here. Not that that would matter a whole lot. As you move, then as you see, as you move up, as you move up, you begin to see, uh, or this would represent something of what's happening right here. And we might do another set of uh, of delineations here that would show what's happening right here. Now we're not going to do all that, just going to do enough. So what's the first thing that we notice? As I said before, we notice that the sky 
is almost no color at all. The sky is almost white. Almost no color at all. It's a gray sky. So that means that you would want to start out with a co two complementary colors. Colors that when mixed together are going to give you neutral or gray. Um, it's, and so you could easily go with green and red uh, because in one reason that you might want to do are yellow green and red violet. One reason you might want to do that is because you're seeing the green here. You're not going to have it on your palette. So why not have green and red? Uh, you could do that. So I've got some red here on my palette. And I've got some green on my palette. So I can pull red and green together. And with red and green, I can create a neutral. And once I have that neutral value created, um, I could let it lean towards green and, or lean towards red. Once I have that neutral value created, then then I can begin to change its or neutral color created. I can begin to change its value. And I get its value very light, and that would be the value that's probably mm -hmm, too dark, right? So that means I need to get that value a little lighter there. And um, so well, I have, and you have too, probably, seen, uh, I've been in foggy situations where the sky is about this value, where the sky is is dark, the, when it's really, really, on a really, really cloudy, uh, especially in the wintertime, um, we would see that, you might see that cloud, uh, you might see the cloudy sky, the sky is that dark, but um, this looks like it's uh, uh, in a, we see grass there, so that tells us that the season is not well, it's not necessarily, there's no, we see deciduous, uh, we see some foliage there that we wouldn't see in the some in the wintertime, so we, we know then that that's uh, not a wintertime fog. And so I would just uh, work the value of the sky first. Let's set the value of the sky first. And so then we carry that value of the sky. I'm not going to carry it all the way up because, I'm, as I said, I'm just showing you how to think about the thing. So if you set the value of the sky first, uh, if you can see the sky in your foggy area, in your foggy image, if you set the value of the sky first, then as I said before, you take a look at what's happening here. Barely any value change. So we can see it's still neutral and we, as we're coming down to this side, right up in here, we barely have any value change at all. So you see that's too much value change. So we get a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter. And maybe, and this is going, it, then it, as you see it disappears actually, it disappears, actually it disappears into the sky altogether right up here. Now you see the value begins to change a little bit right here, but no edge, no real edge. As we're coming down, well, let's see, then this area is pretty much the same value right in here. So it's barely any value difference as it's coming down. It begins to get, there's a little bit more value difference, but still no color. So you can see as it's coming down, as the trees are coming downhill, we get a little bit more value difference. But still, as I said before, we don't really see the color yet. It gets a little bit darker as it comes down very gradually and then as we're moving up oh, whoa that's too much way too much way too much value difference so I'll lighten that up no edges we don't really see any edges I mean now we'll see some ver little variations as, we, as it's coming as the trees are coming closer to the surface we're seeing a little bit more variation a little bit more variation in value. You see it begins to get a little darker. As it gets closer to the surface of the road, it begins to get a little darker. And we, we're beginning to see a little bit of variation in color. I'll just stop that right there. But these edges, these edges, let's see, this is, it comes on down. Whoops! Let's get that a little bit. There we go. Now as it comes on down, these edges are remaining, these edges are blurred. So I'm going to pull the paint off the brush. I'm going to weave those edges into the sky. Weave those edges into the sky. Now we see as the fog is moving in this direction, we begin to see a little bit more definition too. So in some places, the sky itself 
will move right through an edge as it comes in this direction too. Just showing you things to look for. Don't think of don't don't use this as a formula because every fog condition, every uh, that you look at is going to be a little bit different. What what I'm showing, I'm uh, trying to uh, point out is how to look for these two things: the value difference and and the edge difference. I'll get those edges just a little bit more defined as we're getting closer to the bottom there. And you see as it gets closer to the bottom, or closer to the road, it gets a little darker. Maybe not that dark. And it takes on a little bit more of that green. So let's just see. As it reaches the road here, it's a little bit more defined. It takes a little bit takes on a little bit more of the green. We begin to see a little bit more of what it really is, and it gradually, it gradually as it moves uphill, as it moves, I would say that differently, as it moves toward the fog, the images gradually become less defined, and they become more neutral, grayer, if you will. Now let's see, we'll see some value differences in here. You might see some little bit of value differences, but you see the value contrast, the value differences, the closer, the closer, the more fog that's gathered around them, the, the less of the value difference you're going to see. So now this set of trees, I'm going to, well, I won't even go there. Because um, as, as it's moving closer in here, you see the contrast gets closer and closer. Now one thing I am going to do now is to soften these edges and she's using a very soft brush here and soften the edges and now you can see how that sort of disappears as the edges come down they get a little bit more defined but whoops nothing like that not like that let's get this a little bit more definition but the edges remain soft as they come down so now let's see does that give you an idea of how to approach fog. The main thing is to use your eyes. It's to allow your eyes to tell you what it's doing. What is the value doing? What is the color doing? And what are the edges doing? Those are the three main things to look for. As long as you call it fog, you're going to be in the fog. You're not going to be able to really see what it's doing. And so the real key is to look for what those three things are doing. And if you found this helpful, oh, then you know we have lots and lots of other helpful quick tips right here. Plus, we have lots of helpful full-length videos at DianeMinds.com. Go check it out. And if you have something you'd like for me to do a quick tip on, drop a comment right down here. Just tell me what you'd like for me to do, and we'll put it on the schedule. And there's your quick tip.